Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to a new project. This one is a continuation of what I mentioned in the last video, where um, I used the Visual Analyzer software with the PC sound card. I decided to build an interface for the, um, for the sound card itself. I don't know if you know how these sound card uh, oscilloscopes work. You just uh, take the signal, go into the microphone or line in onto the sound card, and uh, the software then reads that as an input and displays it either on a scope or uh, in this case scope and spectrum analyzer. Now the scope function to me is, is kind of worthless. If I didn't have a scope it would probably be useful but uh, I don't really need it as a scope. I do like the uh, spectrum analyzer function. It plots the frequency responses or bird plots and it's a simple way of doing it but um, at the moment it's doing it with quite a lot of noise and this thing is a buffer. Basically what this does is it uh, receives the input and it then buffers it and also attenuates it if I want to. I've got various attenuation levels to feed it into the uh, sound card without two things. One, so much uh, noise and two, without the risk of blowing up the, the computer sound card, hopefully. So I've just received the PCBs from PCBWay and I want to thank them again for sponsoring this video and I'm going to build this and I'll be just describing what it is that I'm actually designing. This is nothing uh, too dramatic, nothing too new. It's been done before. I decided to do it like this because I like the neat finish and I want to put this then into an enclosure, one that'll be uh, shielded so that we get as little noise as possible. So let me get on with this. And here we have it. It's all done. I decided not to bother you watching me do all the uh, soldering. I think I'm sure you've seen enough of that. But um, all I can tell you is I made no mistakes on this board, which is quite a change. So um, this version 1 is going to stay version 1. Version 1. <laughs> all right. What do we have here? We've got a buffer. And basically what it does is it takes an input signal. You take the, your signal coming in here. Imagine you're probing something with like with a scope, except you're doing it with this. And your signal comes in and it, is, it gets attenuated or not, depending on what position of that switch you have it in, okay? One way it's uh, times one or divided by one, and the other one it's 10 times, so divided by 10. Very, very similar to what you get on your scope probes, where you make it uh, 10 times or one times. So this thing attenuates it. If you've got a very high voltage or a higher voltage than your board can take, you put it on uh, divided by 10, or times 10 if you want to call it that. If you've got a small voltage, you can leave it on straight through. And I'll explain this in the circuit description which will follow. What you see is uh, basically you see a 1 mega ohm resistor to ground when the signal comes in. It's 1 mega ohm and it's made up of 900 ohms and 100 ohms. And the reason is to get the 1 tenth if you put the switch in the divided by 10 position. So 900 and 100 gives you 1 mega ohm. It's exactly what you'd see on a uh, on a normal oscilloscope, for example, with a one times probe. You've got a DC blocking capacitor here, and I've used a uh, 0.1 microfarad VEMA. This is rated for 250 volts. It's more than I want. I will not be using this thing to probe high voltages, or at least not uh, anode voltages on the tube radio or anything like that. So this is fine for me. I've left spaces in here for compensation capacitors. And again, this has got to do with, um, if you've got uh, attenuation here, if you've got a 1 to 10 attenuation, and you use, if you use a uh, scope probe, which is what I want to use on here, divided by 1 divided by 10 scope probe, that thing's got a capacitor compensation, so that your impedance matching equals the uh, resistance match. Your XC, your capacitive reactance, would be equal to your resistance itself in terms of uh, a divider. That's easy to understand when you look at uh, what it is you're doing when you, uh, uh, when you set the uh, that little tuning cap on your scope probe. But I haven't put them in. I've made space for them. I've actually made space for three capacitors here. I'll explain again when I describe the circuit. But I haven't put them in because I want to see if I need them. Remember, this thing is audio. Uh, my uh, sound card will only receive or will only see signals up to just over 20 kilohertz. So I can't use this thing to probe high frequencies. It's useless, right? I'm using this for audio. 
And for audio, I don't think I'm going to need that compensation, but we will see that. We'll test that. Then what this does is it takes that to um, an op amp. It's an LM358 because I wanted this thing to go as close to the rails as possible. It's got two diodes protecting the input. And what I have here, this is just a uh, voltage divider to, to use a single battery. And so basically what this does, it's two resistors that create a sort of a pseudo ground at 4.5 volts when I use a 9 volt battery. I actually buffer that through another one of the uh, spare op amps that's in here. This is a dual op amp uh, IC. So again, very, very standard. And the other thing I've got here on the outside, on the end here, is a uh, trimmer pot, a 10k to ground, and the wiper goes to the output. And again, anything to do with with actual measurements, with actual values, is worthless, all right? I'm not even going to bother to uh, calibrate the, uh, the sound card. I don't need it for that. All I need is to see relative responses. This is what this is for. I want to use it, as I said, more for the uh, spectrum analyzer than for the actual scope itself. Obviously, the scope function will work. Um, so I want to make sure I don't clip. And what else do we have here? Basically, that's it. I've got all the components on this side. One other component on the underside is the uh, that little capacitor. It's a 100 uh, nanofarad capacitor across the supply. This is just to do some decoupling right by the IC uh, supply pins. Now, the IC will see basically 0 and, and 9 volts, which is actually minus 4.5 plus 4.5 because of this divider circuit over here. So what I'm going to do next is I want to see how flat this is. Okay, there's no point trying to do a bode plot, a frequency response plot of, of your signal coming in here and going out here if this thing is not flat. Okay, and I also want to see how, how well the attenuation works, whether it does actually give us a 10 to 1. So I'm going to put this up. I'm going to feed a signal from the signal generator. I'm going to feed it into here, direct. We'll do direct for now. We'll try an actual scope probe later, but I'll do direct for now. And I will send this signal to the actual real oscilloscope so we can test this board, make sure it works well. And once again, I want to thank PCBWay. These boards came out perfectly. I, uh, it took a while to get here because of the Christmas mess up. And actually, the boards weren't the ones that delayed me. Some of these components, I was waiting for this uh, IC and I ordered them and it took ages to get here. So this thing is... Uh, it's coming out a bit later than I expected. That's why you still got Merry Christmas on the PCB Way box. So Merry Christmas in the uh, beginning of February. Anyway, let me set this up and we can test just how well this thing works. Now, remember, the whole point of this is twofold. One is to protect the, uh, the sound card of the scope so it doesn't get excessively high voltages. And two, it's to reduce the noise pickup from the environment. So this whole thing is going to go into an aluminium box. But for now, we will still get noise. We will be testing it outside the box and we'll see how that goes. One more thing just to note, um, this battery will be connected here. This thing will be inside the box. But what I'm going to do, and I, I decided not to do it on the board because it just makes it more messy to fit in the box. This is not going to go straight to the board. It's going to go to a switch. The switch will then come to there. And on the switch, there'll be an LED to give us an indication of power on. That's just to make sure you don't forget it on and, and waste another battery. It's happened more times than I can care to, to mention, so I'll try and avoid that. Let me set it up and we'll test this whole thing. Right, we've got signal generator set to 1 kilohertz, 1 volt peak to peak. I've got that going into here, so that's going straight into the input. I've got the output connected to the scope, scope probe. Scope is channel 1. Got nothing on at the moment. I don't even know whether the setting is on times 1 or times 10, so let's just see what we get. Well, we've got times 1. We've got 1 volt peak to peak exactly. Okay, good. If I take this and I make it divided by 10, obviously a bit more noise creeps in. So let's see if I put this at 10 volts, what do I get there? 1.01. .01. So that's perfect. That's working. Divide by 10 is working perfectly. Let me put that back to one volt and I'm going to put this on times one or we'll divided by one. Let's go up. There's 10 kilohertz. 
still got 992 millivolts. That's one volt to me. 20, 992, that's one volt. That's perfect. You know, from 992 millivolts to one volt is eight millivolts. So that is damn good enough. Yeah, I can actually go further. Let's go crazy. Let's go to 50 kilohertz. Still staying flat at 992. So this thing is uh, broadband all the way to the top. I don't think the bottom will be the same because we've got that input capacitor of uh, 100 nanofarads. Let's see what happens if I go below one kilohertz. So let me get this down. Here's one kilohertz. Let's go here. 600, still seeing one volt. 100, still seeing one volt. Fifty. Nine seventy six. It's starting to creep down, but twenty. Nine sixty eight. Okay, so there's a slight drop off there. Twenty kilohertz. Twenty hertz. We're at nine sixty eight. I could increase that capacitor. Do I want to? No. Um, I could increase that capacitor to say one microfarad. That would definitely bring that up, but I really don't need to. I really don't need to. I think this is damn good enough for me. So this thing seems to be pretty flat. That's on times 10, on times 1, sorry. Let's try on the times 10, see what happens. So we're going to increase the amplitude to 10 volts just to make it easier to read. And we've got the same situation, 968 millivolts, which is one tenth and a little bit less, okay? Let's go up in frequency to 100 millivolts, 100 uh, hertz, one volt, perfect. Let's go up to one kilohertz, one volt, perfect. Let's go up to 10 kilohertz, 992, exactly the same, 20 kilohertz, actually that went to 30. There we go, one volt. So we've got a slight, actually we've got a slight rise on here from 992. Oh no, it's jumping between 992 and 1 volt anyway. Now that is with a direct probe, okay? Now what I want to do is I actually want to use a uh, oscilloscope probe instead of using a normal, you know, BNC connector. And the reason for that is I can have divided by 1 or divided by 10. So effectively, if this thing works, um, I can get divided by one. If I put that on one and I put the uh, unit on one as well, I can, get, I can put that unit on divided by 10 and leave this on one, I get 10. And if I do this to divide by 10, 10 times, I get 100, 100 times drop. So I actually have very, very good um, um, range up to 100 times uh, division with using this times 10 and that times 10 at the bottom as well. So I want to test this. Now remember, this thing's got a, uh, what is it, 9 mega ohm capacitor in here, and it's uh, resistor in here, and it's also got a capacitor in here. So this might affect us a bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on 1 kilohertz. I'm going to um, put this on times 1, and I'll set that up. Let's see how this goes. Now I need to connect this to there. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a little wire. <laughs> really high tech here. Hang that on there. And this is my ground. OK. Now, what do I have here? I've got this on divide by 1. And I've got this on divide by 10. So 10 volts should be 1 volt. And it is, and it is, okay. Now, on the times 10, this capacitor doesn't apply. On the times 1, divided by 1, this capacitor doesn't apply. But I just want to quickly check just some quick ones, 100 hertz, just to make sure. Yeah, we've got 1 volts, 20 kilohertz. We've got 1 volts, no problem. Now what happens if I divide this thing by 10? Okay, and if I take the other one and I divide by one, 
Now we've got that capacitor coming in here. Now I'm wondering if this thing is going to affect it. This thing is 1 volts at 20 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz, 1 volts, no problem. Let's see, 1 kilohertz. 1 volts, no problem. 100 hertz. One volts, no problem. Okay. That seems to be working now. That's on divide by 10. And now this one is, I put that one on divide by 10, but I'm going to increase the amplitude to the maximum it'll go. It won't go any further. There'll be a little bit more fuzziness on there. What do we have on there? We've got to go for a reference value here. 100 hertz, I've got 200 millivolts approximately. Let's go to 1 kilohertz. I've got 214, 210, 208. The other one was about 208, so that's also right. And if I go to 10 kilohertz, a little bit more, just a bit more, and 20 kilohertz. Again, 210. It, it's the same thing. This thing's working fine. Now, I did calibrate this scope probe using that um, oscilloscope uh, square wave output just to make sure that it was, it was properly compensated. But what I can see here is that I can use this scope probe as my probe for my device, the same as if I was using a normal oscilloscope probe. I can use this on times 1 or times 10. I can put that device on times 1 and times 10 as well. And I can go from direct in, so 1 to 1, I can go 10 to 1 in two different ways, either there or there. And if I have both times 10 on, I can go 100 to 1, which means I've got a huge range of voltages here that I can use, which is great. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to connect this to the sound card and we'll see the result on the scope. OK. So here she is in a metal box, aluminium box. We've got our input there, our output there, on and off. Nice and bright so I don't forget it on and waste another battery. This is times 1 times 10. As I explained it's divided by 1, so 1 to 1 and that'll be 10 to 1. And that really is it. That's all you have. Now all we need to do is connect it up and test it. So our probe goes on here. Our um, RCA to the sound card goes in here. I haven't mentioned this, but obviously this is one channel only. I'm only going to use one channel. You can actually use two because the uh, sound card input is stereo and the visual, um, visual analyzer software does provide for two channels, but I have no use for them at all. Now I've got a uh, signal coming in from the signal generator. So we'll flick it on. And there we go. One kilohertz, perfect. You can move this down a bit. It's actually um, zeroed at zero dB. I did that on purpose. See, what we've got here is it's about halfway. So it says at minus 0.22 dB. It's about halfway. We've got very little distortion here. We don't see much here. This is probably some noise going on inside the computer itself. If this is 0 dB, which it is, this down here is down to minus 78, minus 80, which is pretty good to me. Now, if I increase the amplitude of the input signal too much, you start seeing that. In other words, over there, you can still see it hasn't reached the top, but we are getting to distortion territory, and this is inside the sound card, okay? So, I have to just remember rule of thumb, play with the attenuation, either the times 1 or times 10. Here's the uh, times 10 or divided by 10, divided by 1. So I'll play with the attenuation to ensure that that never goes up above halfway. And of course, I've got the times 10 on the scope probe as well. So as long as I do that, I'm fine. Now, there's one thing I want to test here, and that is I want to test how straight that is, because <laughs> I've been playing with this and I remembered something. And this sort of goes back to the problem I had with the Saba Breisgau where the top end was being cut off. So I'm going to put a sweep on here, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, and I'm going to hold it. 
and show you what happens. So we saw that this unit was perfectly flat all the way to 20 kilohertz. And now we're seeing a drop of about, well, almost 12 dB on there, 10 dB. So this is a sound card problem. Now there is a solution and I'm going to do it here because I hadn't worked with this for some time and I had to sort of go back and figure out how it's done. And it took me quite a while. But what you can do is you can do frequency compensation and I'm going to enable compensation by changes. And now if I just redo that, take away the hold, put the hold back up, this thing is as flat as a pancake. Well, with a bit of a boost there, I wonder why. Hmm, I'll have to look at that. Okay, let me show you what happens here. What you've got here is you adding compensation to make up for any deficiencies in your, um, in your path that haven't got to do with the device under test. Now in this case, I've got this thing here, which I know is as flat as a pancake. I've got the signal generator, which I know is perfectly flat all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now the problem is here, inside this thing, I've got um, the, the, the sound card itself is cutting off highs for some reason, but I can go in here and do the frequency compensation. And the way this works is you can actually, you, you enable compensation and then you can add a file here. Now this particular file, I have actually edited and I see there's a problem here. Something changed here. Now, the way this works, I'm actually going to be doing a video on here because I don't like... What is this? This, this wasn't supposed to be there. I wonder. Okay, let me try that again. This is the file, Electronics Old and New Compensation file. I'll be doing a video on here to show you how this is done. And you can edit that. Now, what I see, something has changed here, and I don't remember changing it, but let me, uh, let me get rid of that. That's definitely wrong. Save. I just save it as electronics old and new. My changes. Let's see if that's corrected it. Yep. Okay. When messing with the file, I did something wrong. Now, I'm going to be doing a video on this setup the frequency compensation because it's quite tricky. Uh, but what we can see here, I've done it, took a long time. I had to relearn it, which is why I want to do a video because I can't find any information on the web to show how this is done. And this thing is just too good to, to mess up. I mean, to ignore. I like the software. It's uh, very clean, very professional. It looks really good. It's only going to be good for the audio frequencies. And even then you're looking at relative values. Forget about getting absolutes here. I don't want to go into calibration. You can do, you can calibrate this with a known input signal and all that stuff. And anyway, the sound card I have on this computer is pretty old. So if I got a, a new sound card, I might go to that extent, but I don't think it's necessary. All I need to do is I need to do these frequency sweeps and see what's what. And also, of course, if I stop the sweep and if I am going to look at a signal I really do want to know if there's any artifacts. As you can see, the, the, the scope function is actually not bad at all. Now, if I go to frequency here, two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz, this thing is pretty spot on. So um, I can look for artifacts. See there, it's still there, it's still at zero dB. I can look for artifacts. If I've got an amplifier or something else, I can see harmonics over here. And as I said, if I go too high on that, I can just drop this times 10. And then if I go to amplitude, um, let's see, 5 volts. Yep. And if I give the scope selector a times 10, then I just go up. I mean, I'll tell you what I've got at the moment. 
I've got this thing is still way below where it should be and I've got 20 volts peak to peak. So uh, and the noise floor gets a little bit noisier at low uh, attenuation or high attenuation but not by much. So as far as I'm concerned this thing is usable, it's good, I like it and I'm going to be using it. Now uh, as far as the schematic is concerned I'll just give it a short description but before I do I just want to tell you these uh, boards, the boards that I designed here are on the, I'm going to put it on the uh, PCBWay um, site so anybody who wants to can download or can order from the from the site itself, it's on the share section. So um, I'll put a link below on, uh, I'll put a link below so you can go straight there and order boards if you like. Knock yourself out. So anyway, let me describe the circuit quickly. So very simply, here's the schematic. I'll start with the power supply. Because we want to use uh, a single supply, a 9 volt battery, we've got to create a virtual earth or virtual ground. Best way to do that is you take two resistors. I've used 10k and 10k. That means that this thing between 9 volts, uh, 20k, it's a very low current to bias that, to set that at 4.5 volts. I stabilize that with two capacitors here. This is overkill, but that's fine. That goes into 5. There's a unity gain buffer. The non-inverting input is uh, what receives that 4.5 volts. A unity gain buffer goes through there. And so out of 7, you're getting 4.5 volts. This is just here to, um, when this thing switches on, these capacitors who are, that are there to smooth it as well will charge. This thing stops it from, uh, really reduces a bit of the peak current and uh, really acts a little bit as a almost low pass filter as well. And then that becomes the ground. So when you look at this now, everything else is put aside because what you have is ground plus voltage minus voltage. In other words, plus supply minus supply happens to be 4.5. It works pretty well with the LM358 because the LM358 goes fairly close to one of the rails, not quite to the other one. But um, the voltages or rather the signals we're sending in here are so small that this should be fine. You can, of course, replace that battery with a direct power supply, anything up to the maximum rating of the uh, LM358, which I think is 32 volts. So, you know, the more voltage you have there, the more headroom you've got there, but you don't really need that voltage because the sound card can't take much anyway. So once you've done that, you've got your positive supply, your negative supply, and your ground. Everything else now is relative to those uh, points there. And really what we have here is the circuit. So your input comes in here. That is the DC blocking capacitor. And you can use an XCAP uh, safety capacitor, but I've just used a 100 nanofarad 250 volt uh, Rima. Um, I'm not going to use this on higher voltages. I'm not going to use this with tube gear. At least not. <laughs> yeah, I will be using a tube gear, but it'll be on the low voltage section. So input and speaker output. I won't be connecting this, for example, to the anode of the... Um, of one of the tubes. So uh, that should be more than enough. And then what you've got, what we've got is a voltage divider. So this thing is going to see over here the same thing that it would see or should see uh, if, it, if it was a scope, right? And the scope is one megahertz, uh, one mega. And the scope, if you look into a scope, you see one meg, mega ohm resistor. And what I've got here is really one mega ohm resistor. It's two 1.8s to give me 900. In parallel and then 100k gives me 1 meg but fortunately this intersection here is 100 over a thousand so it's 10 percent so here I've got my 1 to 1 going through there to that point of the switch my 1 to 10 coming through here so that's one tenth of the input voltage if my voltage is higher and then I've got my uh, center of the switch going through to that end now why these capacitors well when you look into a scope the input of a scope, besides the 1 meg, you'll also see 15 to 20 picofarad capacitors. So um, what you need to do is you try and compensate accordingly, because if you use a scope probe with a 10, 9 mega ohm resistor and a small compensation capacitor, you should also use one here. Now, I've left this open. Now, the way to do this is to work on a, uh, you know, you, you basically take your 9 meg uh, 1 meg times 15, uh, 15 picofarads, this works out a bit more. Um, and when you multiply 900k times 15 picofarads, 
you should get the same as 100k times whatever this is. And it comes to about 130 something. So I've left two spots there for the capacitors so that if you want to make up that value, you can do so. As we've just seen in the experiments, I haven't needed to worry about that, which is a good thing. So those stay there if you want to go to that extreme. Or in my case, I've just left them open. So what happens here? You've got a voltage coming here, a signal coming in here. What happens if that's very high? Well, you don't want it to pump straight into the uh, in non-inverting input of that, uh, that op-amp. So you put a resistor here, which basically acts as a current limit. Now this op-amp doesn't take much current at all, so you shouldn't have any current really. You should have whatever voltage is there appearing here. But if you do have an exceedingly high voltage and these diodes start conducting, then you've got a current limit. And the way these diodes work is, if your signal is say 10 volts, right? Right here, 10 volts. Now you haven't gone through the divider because if you went through the divider, you'd have one volt. But if it's say 10 volts over here, then 10 volts will go in here, can't go down there, but it can go through here because that's 4.5. So you'd have 10 volts minus 4.5 minus a diode drop divided by 47K. That gives you your current that will draw through there to the supply. And it probably will save your op-amp and your sound card. If this thing is minus 10 volts, same thing occurs. That's more negative than that one, so current will flow that way. So again, you've got that to protect uh, your circuit, nothing else. These two diodes do exactly that. They protect the input from excessive voltage. And then what you've got is another unity gain buffer. This uh, capacitor is just to decouple the power supplies. Nothing much here. Um, this is to just prevent some oscillations and in the event of short circuit, you put a 100 ohm resistor just in case you get a short circuit, you don't have this thing pumping to ground. Although I do believe these are uh, probably short circuit protected, I'm not quite sure. And this is to do a final um, adjustment of the level going to the sound card, which is your output. Now, this circuit, as I mentioned, is nothing too original from me. Um, a lot of these have been shown around. One of them that's very much like this, I started doing this and really I, I work my way through it, start thinking aloud. Um, and then I got the idea, for example, of the op-amp itself. I was going to use a dual supply. I got the idea of this actual op-amp from ESP, the ESP site. He's got one exactly like this, really. Um, the other thing I took from ESP, I must admit, is the dual uh, filtering. I'd only used filtering on, I'd used one filter cap here instead of two. Um, he uses two, which I quite like. And I think he's got three levels here, 100 to 1, 10 to 1, and 1 to 1. I'm not sure. But as I said, I don't want to you know, claim this as my original design. Most of these things can't be original anyway. They've all been worked out somewhere. But this is what it is, and there's nothing too special about it. So this thing should come in quite useful. And as I mentioned with that, um, with that uh, sweep that was going sort of downhill at the end, I have to redo the sweep of that Bryce Gow because I think that's why I was getting a, a cutoff of the high frequencies quite dramatically, actually. So um, now that I've compensated it, I probably will redo it just to make sure that it's not as bad as it looked. And the other thing is I think that um, that uh, visual analyzer, uh, analyzer software probably merits a little uh, how to use video because I really used to use it a lot. Um, I actually used it as a scope at one point and um, as well as the signal uh, spectrum analyzer function. But the scope was quite useful as well, just to see quick signals. But I um, haven't used it for a long time. There have been a couple of iterations and updates. So I wasn't quite sure how to do that compensation. And it took me a while to figure it out. So I'll probably do that. I'm not sure when, but I'll probably do that and post a small video on that. Download the software. It's free and you can figure out whether you want to make some use of it or not. And um, I'll see you back soon for another video and thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.